So just to continue along that same line. So time and attention are essential materials for happiness, right? If you're going to be happy, you're, it will be determined by how you spend your time and what you pay attention to. Those two will affect you. Like I said, they're going to corrupt you. You know, what you spend your time on and what you pay attention to, you submit yourself to because they're going to influence you. They're going to master you. And it is there's it's, there's nothing that forces you to spend your time. There's nothing that forces you to pay attention. Every time you spend, every attention you pay, it's a decision. You made a decision to do it. And therefore, you'll be responsible for it. You'll be responsible for the harvest you get. Now, if you like the harvest, great. Spend more time on it. Pay more attention to it. If you don't, then you need to make changes. You need to spend less time on it. You need to pay less attention to it because you're in control of your harvest, not God. God is not in control. God has given us a liberty to, to decide. We get the consequence of our decision. To change the consequence, we need to change our decision. Then we can get a different outcome based on the decision we'll make. It's impute output. That's the way God has made it. And God has sworn that that's the way the whole hurt is going to run. Nothing's going to change it. It's a principle of God. It's a law of God. It's a, it's a, it's a landmark of God. It's not going to change. It's, go, it, it's worked yesterday. It's working today. It will always work. It's up to us to use it. Otherwise, it will use us. Right? So, a wonder mind is connected to unhappiness. If you don't have control of your mind, if you're not able to pay attention to the things you need to pay attention to, you're going to be mentally sick. You know what mental sickness is? You know, people people don't understand mental sickness. You know, if someone is mentally sick, you think it's when you just go out there, you're 100% mentally sick. No, uh -uh. Any deprecation, your mental ability, mental agility is a, is a degree of mental sickness, right? Mental wholeness is a place where we're able to uh, respond at the level and frequency we were created to. And this is the level and frequency we were created to. Each time we see anything, every moment of our life, our mind goes and reflects to the history we have to compare what we are seeing at that point in time to our history, make an interpretation and decide what to do. That is happening every second, every millisecond, every millisecond. As I'm talking to you, my mind is racing, thinking about what what I'm saying vis-a-vis -vis what I've said before, what I've read, that is taking place, right? It's at an incredible speed. My ability to use all of that data, all of that history, and be talking to you at the same time is a level of my mental wholeness. Now, we see, when I'm not able to control my mind, when my mind is being oppressed by depression, anxiety, my mind is torn all over the place, it reduces my mental uh, my mental acumen, right? It, 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 it reduces my mental efficacy. And that is a degree of mental sickness, right? It might not be, it just means that I'm not able to use my mind at its optimum position, right? So my ability to be in control of my time, my attention helps my mental acumen. It helps me to be able to use my mind rightly, right? and helps my mental wholeness as well, right? So uh, Matthew Kingsword and Daniel Gibbett puts it this way. He says, the ability to think about what is not happening is a cognitive achievement that comes at an emotional cost, right? And, and pretty much tying all what I've said, you know, part of what it was said in the book is this. It says that the amount of work we do today is less than what we've always done. However, people are more tired today than they've always been and the reason is because of the degradation in our mind because our mind is being oppressed by depression anxiety depression not being able to forget something that we did wrong in the past anxiety of the future right so our present is being burdened with the past and the future we're, we're, we're being we're limited in our ability to to live in the present. Therefore, that burdens our mind and reduces our mental efficacy. 
right? So our ability to separate all of this, you know, will, 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 will increase our effectiveness in our today, right? And our ability to spend time on the things we truly need to spend time on and, and pay attention to the things we truly need to pay attention to. So pretty much the things that distract us, our time and our attention are pretty much distractions, right? And they bring an overstimulation to our mind. And in that sense could interfere in our relationship, right? Because if I don't spend the time I should spend on the things that are priority to me, I don't pay attention to the things that are priority to me, I'm going to lose those relationships, right? The time will go that I will not necessarily have made better the relationships in my life, right? So we need to work on uh, being able to take away the distractions so that we can focus on the things that are important.